how the real fun starts. Let's see how to use the manual tracker node. We'll see how to set the proper trackers and work with a threshold, and this will help us with some video artifacts. Since we have two different workflows right now, feeding from the same footage, we can export and import the 2D trackers info from one tracking node to another. Let's see how it works. So let's go ahead and put the first track. Luckily, most of the trackers are visible throughout the length of the image sequence. So what we can do now, we can click on the create and make sure that your user track node is selected and choose a point in which you would like to put your first tracker. So I have a good corner in this tracker right here. I'm going to change the shape of my pattern area as well as the search area. And I'm going to lower the failure threshold to 0.5. Under the deformation, I'm gonna change it to rotate and skew. And at this point, I'm going to try track backwards because I'm sitting on the last frame of the footage. And now I'm going to look at the little magnifying glass to see how my tracker behaves. So I see that at frame 20, it slides a little bit so I can move it back into place and retrack backwards and forward just to make sure that the trackers follow the proper pattern. Great, so let's click on the create again. And this time we're gonna choose this corner over here. And in a very similar way what we did with this tracker, I'm going to change the pattern area and the search area. And I'm gonna change the deformation to rotation and skew. And of course the failure threshold is going to change to 0.5. Track backwards. And once the tracker is done, I'm going to scrub through the timeline to see how the tracker behaves. And right about here, there's a little bit of a slide. So I'm going to move the center of my tracker back to where I think it's supposed to be and retrack backwards. So now I can continue and track this footage by repeating the same process of the create. Let's take this corner right over here and let's redefine the pattern area and the search area. I am on frame 49, so I'm gonna have to track forward and backwards. So change the deformations and the failure threshold, and let's track it forward. Let's take our timeline, move it back to the same starting point, and track backwards. So I spent a good time on putting enough trackers on the box here, and I did end up with about 11 trackers. Now what I can do is I can click on the all and that will select all the trackers that I have in the scene. And I'm gonna click on export. Under the export, I'm going to export this as a special text file with the tracking information. So I'm going to call this box 50 underscore 2D trackers. And I'm gonna click on save. Now remember that we do have two different workflows in here due to the fact that the estimate focal did predict a focal length that is six millimeter higher than what it was actually shot. So after the edit camera and the estimate focal, I'm going to put another user track by clicking on the create user track and on the import button. Now I'm going to take my text file that I just imported and I'm gonna click on open. Now both workflows have the same tracking information and furthermore, both of them are ready for the camera solve. Working with the 2D trackers is important and needs to be done properly. We saw how to observe the errors of the trackers and we exported and imported 2D tracking information from one node to another. Next, we'll see how to take the 2D info and calibrate it into the 3D information.